Are you encouraged by the bond that which seems to be developed between the president and President Duterte? Yes, uh, I, I'm very encouraged by the results so far of President Trump's visit to the Philippines. As you probably know, the Philippine-U.S. relations uh, were off to a rocky start during our president's uh, assumption of uh, position last May. But uh, now I think uh, things look encouraging. The, there seems to be a good chemistry between President Trump and President Duterte. And uh, we hope this will lead to better relations between the two countries. This is coming at a time, of course, uh, Mr. Monzon, about the Philippine stocks, which have been on a tear, up some 20 percent this year. Uh, we are seeing some foreign funds slowly return back into this market this year as well. What do you think is going to keep foreign investors in the country at a time when Philippines is one of the most expensive markets in the region? Uh, well, I think the Philippines is a very good uh, investment destination for foreign investors now. As you probably know, uh, our market's up almost 25 percent from uh, the beginning of the year. Uh, the Philippine economy is going to be one of the, uh, I guess, highest, uh, will, will have the highest GDP in Asia, next only to China. So. We have a big infrastructure program that, you know, is going to take place uh, starting this year. So I think there's a lot of opportunities for foreign investors to come to the Philippines. It seems like, though, Ramon, that some of the foreign money really goes to just a handful of stocks just based on familiarity. If it's San Miguel, if it's Alaya, uh, is that a problem? I'm sorry, I didn't catch your question. And most of the foreign money that goes into the Philippines seems like it's only a handful of stocks, like Alaya, the San Miguel's out there. Is that a problem to you? Well, uh, it's a, we have, it's a problem in the sense that somehow foreign investors, uh, uh, they, they, don't, they don't feel they have enough products to in, uh, invest in the Philippines. Uh, while we have big, I mean, uh, big capital, uh, you might say, market capitalization companies, a lot of our companies are still have very uh, minimal public float, and this kind of deters some uh, foreign investors from coming in. But slowly but surely, we are focusing on this. Uh, our Securities and Exchange Commission. We'll be issuing uh, new regulations on the public, increasing public float of listed companies. So this should be another uh, attraction for foreign investors. Uh, Ramon, can you tell us a bit more about your plans for derivatives and commodities exchange? I mean, what is the rationale behind the move and how will this position the PSC to attract more foreign investors and perhaps offer some hedging opportunities? Okay, well, the initiatives that we are embarking on for the PSE is number one, uh, we'd like to increase the products available to foreign investors. Uh, so we'll be introducing a lot of new products starting next year. Uh, I also envision the exchange to uh, be, you know, be at par with our colleagues in the region. So we're in, embarking on this acquisition of the fixed income exchange so, so that, you know, uh, investors can just go to one exchange for both fixed income and equities. We're also trying to uh, get talk started with our uh, Department of Agriculture to get the commodity exchange in place. Uh, this is sure. something that uh, our neighbors are, you know, have been embarking on for a long time. And I think the Philipp it's about time for the Philippines to uh, embark on other exchanges. As you probably read, Remote. I'm also trying to uh, negotiate with the... Yes, go ahead. I, I just, just one last question here, Ramon, before we let you go. I mean, there's been a lot of debate about dual class shares, certainly something that the likes of Hong Kong and Singapore are considering right now. How are you appealing to attract to some of the smaller cap startups in globally here to list in the Philippines?
Well, uh, as you know, I mean, uh, we, we're one of three ASEAN exchanges that have uh, foreign stocks listed in our exchange. Uh, while it's not the same number, not to the same extent as uh, Singapore and Malaysia, I mean, we're proud to be one of the three exchanges, ASEAN exchanges, that have foreign listing. As to, uh, uh, of course, we'd like more foreign companies to be listed here, but really, I mean, a capital flow in the 21st century, I mean, it's, with the globalization, I mean, stocks can be cross-listed, but there's really no, I mean, no impediment for uh, foreign capital to enter any markets, even though uh, foreign shares are not traded here.